My name is Everett, Everett from Watercolors. Welcome to my classroom. Uh, now today I'm going to talk about the uh, color yellow. You can see I'm wearing a yellow shirt today. Uh, the only shirt I have is my running shirt. So I put that under under my brown shirt, which is almost like a yellow ochre. So uh, the color today I'm going to be talking about is yellow. And the painting I'll be doing will be is called Sunflowers and Lavender. And uh, I can't wait to get started on that. I really enjoy. Uh, I'm broadcasting from uh, Chesapeake, Virginia. And uh, I'm going out to uh, YouTube, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Twitch. So I hope you all are aboard and uh, enjoying the show. And uh, get some comments for those that are watching. Uh, Gloria's in the studio with me today. Hello. And she's uh, checking out the messages and uh, helping out with the broadcast. And I really appreciate her help. She helps a lot. So uh, I want to go take you over to the... Uh, let's see, let me get my overhead. Let's see, overhead. Get that off. All right, I'm going to take you to the overhead camera over to my painting table. Okay. Okay, let's go over my setup here. I've got... Uh, my palette laid out here, and let's go over what I'm going to be doing here. I've got, uh, uh, hey, I want to say hi to Linda, uh, Roy, and Esther. Hey, well, nice seeing you. I uh, hope you enjoy the show. I'm looking forward to it myself. So the colors of my palette today, uh, I'm going to be going over the, the color yellow, and I'm going to uh, be using uh, yellow lemon. Yellow Deep, Yellow Ochre, Pernacolum Gold, a Lizarding Crimson, and Ultramarine Blue. You'll notice that I'm just using the primary colors, yellow, which I'll have four colors of yellow, and along with the red and the blue. So I'm using a primary uh, triad today uh, for my paint for the painting. But the primary color I'm really talking about is the yellow. Over here in my palette, you can see I've got, uh, here's my yellow lemon down here in the bottom corner here in the bottom. And here's a yellow deep right next to it. Yellow ochre. This is the cornacridone gold right here. It's nice, beautiful yellow here. Then up here on the top left, I've got the alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue up here at the top. Those are the three primaries, yellow, red, and blue. Okay, now today what I'm going to do is show you uh, a little bit about, about how I'm going to do this painting. And my, my inspiration, let's start, let's start with the primary colors. You got yellow and you got red and blue. That's the primary colors I'm playing with today. And uh, Last week I did the primary color red. This week I'm doing the primary color yellow. My inspiration is uh, to do yellow. I want to say, well, I'll do sunflowers. So that really that started my thinking about doing a painting using sunflowers. And then I, I searched the internet and I came up. I found this photograph. I just typed in uh, typed in sunflowers. That's all I did. And I, it came up with this picture here. I said, wow, uh, that's an interesting design. And it has the lavender. Along with it now, why lavender is so why lavender is so important is uh, lavender is the purple, which is opposite color of yellow, which is the complementary. So I'm going to be talking today about the value of the color, the value of yellow, the color, the U, and of course this complement, which is going to be uh, purple or violet. So that's why that's why the the view uh, the color. Interchangeably, the U or color is the same same ways, the same meaning. But then uh, I started. I got another picture of lavender, and you can see in this picture here that it's got a lot. It's got more of a, a violet, more of a violet color to it. This this original picture I saw had more of a, a more red end to it, more of a red violet. This is more of a blue violet. I really like the blue violet color, so that's really the way I'm going to paint my the painting today. Is you know, these these pictures are taken from 
Provence, France. This is where most of the sunflowers and, and uh, lavender is located. I think they make a fragrance out of lavender. That's why it's so important. Uh, lavender is a very uh, soothing uh, uh, odor, aroma, fragrance. And then I found, uh, doing some more research, uh, I know I know uh, Van Gogh was uh, a famous impressionist painter, and one of his one of the subjects he did in France, uh, he painted sunflowers. So I said, well, let me look up and see what I can find there. So you can notice here that the photograph I found on the internet was very very similar to the painting here of sunflowers. Uh, and this is a field of lavender that he painted. He using usually more blue in there, okay? So again, this is a, another inspiration for this painting today. And also, uh, I've got a book here that I have some references in, and I, I want to show you one here. It's pretty famous. Uh, this is this is a sunflower painting made by Van Gogh, and it's called Sunflowers. And he painted this in 1888. And it's probably it's probably one of the most famous paintings that he did around. So it's it's a uh, it's a very popular painting by by uh, Van Gogh. So these sunflowers and then the lavender colors is what I'm going to paint today. So these are my these are my starting points of my inspiration for the painting. So the next step I did I always do a design I always do a design drawing, and this is my this is my drawing here. And I, I kind of tell her I started I started with this particular idea here, and then I used uh, the Van Gogh painting as kind of a uh, inspiration, and so I used that sort of as my model to come up with a design. So I'm going to I'm going to have the buildings in the background, and then the field of lavender, and then the, of course the field of sunflowers in the foreground. So this is my this is my sketch. This is what I started with uh, as far as my design. So the uh, painting today is going to be called Sunflower and Lavender. Now the next thing I do, once I get the design down, is uh, I played around with the colors. And this is, uh, this is what I call a mixture chart. And a mixing chart is something I would recommend everybody to do before they start a painting. And I went over a mixing chart last week on the red color. But in the yellow, here's the yellow lemon up here at the top. Then this is the yellow deep. And then this is the uh, this is the yellow ochre. Uh, this is the lutheran crimson. And this is the ultramarine deep. And then I've added the fourth color, the fourth yellow, which is the chronochrome gold, down here. So that that's the, those are the main colors I'm using painting today. Now what I did across the top, I I took these colors, I mixed them in all the colors together. I took the uh, lemon yellow, I mixed it with all the colors. You can see the lemon yellow as, a, as I mixed it with all the colors. When I got to the yellow ochre, it, it, added, it added a little more color to it, a little darker. The lithium crimson, or the, uh, to the lithium crimson, it doesn't do much at all because the, the red is so so bold that the yellow doesn't very do very much when you mix it with that. It gives a little bit of orange, but not much. Now, what really is nice is that the yellow lemon mixed with the ultramarine blue gives me a nice green. And I'll be using green today in, in the trees and so forth. So that's a good mixture there. And the yellow with the uh, cornocrinum gold, again, it wasn't much of a change here in the cornocrinum gold. Because the lemon yellow is such a light color, a light value. So the lemon yellow is the lightest value. Uh, the yellow deep is like a middle value. And the... Uh, the uh, Yellow ochre is kind of like a dark, dark yellow value. And the chronocrinum gold is kind of in another dark yellow, but it's kind of in the middle. And I can make all these a little bit lighter by adding water and uh, adding adding water to the mix to make them lighter. And this, this particular mix here, I mixed the uh, yellow deep with all the colors. Kind of got the same results as the lemon yellow. A little darker green down here with the ultramarine blue. And then I mixed... Uh, ultramarine, uh, I mixed uh, yellow ochre with the colors. Kind of got a little bit of orange here with the uh, yellow ochre. Uh, with the lemons of... Oh, this was the yellow, yellow deep, I'm sorry. Uh, with the yellow ochre, it gave me a little bit. This is a 
when you mix the color on top of each other, it just gives you a darker mix. Yellow ochre on top of yellow ochre. Not much change in the Elizabethan uh, crimson. A little darker green, very dark green, and uh, with a, with the ultramarine blue. And you can see here with the uh, Elizabethan crimson mixture, it pretty well. Elizabethan crimson is such a, a strong value that it pretty well wipes out all of it. It gives you a really a, when I mix a uh, Elizabethan crimson with ultramarine blue, I get a very dark value. So it'd be for shadows and a dark mixture. And then I mixed the I mix the ultramarine blue with all the colors. You see, I got the green again with the lemon yellow and so forth. Now I mixed the also the ultramarine blue mixed with the monochrome gold gives me another green. So these two are my lighter greens, and these are much darker greens up here. But down here, I played around with a mixture of yellows to, for the sunflower colors, and I mixed uh, the yellow and the blues to come up with the greens. And then here, over here with the violets, I, I played around with the violet color. Now here I mixed uh, ultramarine deep with uh, uh, elusive crimson to come up with the, the violet mix. And I can go a little bit red or I can go a little bit darker blue. So there's the combination there of the red and the blue. For the, for the uh, lavender color that I want to use in the painting. Okay, so what I did, the next step was I went ahead and, and drew throughout my design on the watercolor paper. And this is a quarter sheet of uh, Gemini watercolor paper. It measures 15 by 15 inches here by 11 inches wide. And what I did here, uh, this I put it, uh, uh, because of, of the size of the sketch I did, I, I put it in a portrait format. It, it would be too long if I turned it, if I made a horizontal, I'd have, been, I'd have to stretch it out too far. So I. I I shortened the uh, shortened the amount of space I wanted for the painting, which turns it into a portrait mode. So I've got a little extra room up here for sky and a lot down in the foreground. So I won't cover it all the way. I'm just so I'll probably cover it in this much right here, as far as the painting goes. And in a painting, you can always crop off the excess areas anyway. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the sky. Oh, I'm going to show you my tools I'm using. Um, I'm going to be using a mixture of tool, tools. Now here are my flats. I'm going to use all three of these flats. So this is the one inch flat. These are the whole buying natural hair brushes. Uh, these are all on my, uh, my website, everswatercolors.com. Uh, this is the one inch flat. This is the three quarter inch flat. And then I have a, a half inch flat. So I'll be using all three of these flats in the painting today. Uh, also uh, for the flowers and for some of the other parts that I'm going to be using uh, three Three rounds, and uh, this is a nice. This is a quill. This is a, a, a large quill, natural hair. I'll be using the Holbein number sixteen round also. So that's a natural hair. I mean, this is synthetic. This is natural hair. I'll also be using the uh, silver brush black velvet number eight round. This is a natural hair, and uh, I'll be using this. The other there's another silver brush uh, here quill which is a medium size, medium size quill. So I'll be using these round brushes here for painting also. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna start at the top and move down. So it's like in the background, moving forward. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take some clear water and I'm going to use the one inch flat brush from Holbein. I'm just gonna wet the sky a little bit. Get a little, get a little, a little moisture up there in the, in the, in the background. Okay, and I'm going to take the three quarter inch and I'm going to pick up a little bit of ultramarine blue. And that's going to be my sky color. So we'll start off with a sky, a nice blue sky. It'll be a sunny sky. I'm not going to get, make me, it's not going to be very complicated. Just a very simple sky. Come on, right on down to the right, right on down to the horizon line, which is the low hills behind these buildings over here. That's about the all I'm going to do with the sky. I'll leave. I'll put a little bit darker over here on the on the left top side, 
and the right side is where the source of light's coming from. It'd be the source of light coming from that direction. So the sun is coming from the uh, right side towards the left. All right, I'm going to take the, the hair dryer and dry it real quickly. Okay, now I'm going to use the, uh, the, the three quarter inch uh, brush. I'm going to mix up a little bit. On the background hill, I'm going to use the same uh, color, ultramarine blue. But I'm going to put a little bit of alyssum crimson mixed in with that. Put a little bit of, uh, it's not real purple. It's going to have just a little bit of, just a touch of red in there. Give it a purple look. So that'll, that'll push that. That'll push that mountain in the background behind. So I'm going to paint this in real quickly. So it's like a medium. It's like a medium value. So the sky was a light value. So now I'm painting like the middle value, medium value. A couple rolling, there's a rolling hills there in the background. This is in the, this picture was taken from Provence, France, which is a beautiful area. Wow. I think a lot of painters, a lot of painters, a lot of impressionist painters painted in France. This is where it all started. The Impressionist movement started in France, and of course Van Gogh was the one that painted a lot of the area over there, uh, the sunflowers and so forth. So there's really an inspiration there uh, to paint this scene. Okay, I'm gonna dry that real quickly. Okay, the next level will be uh, a bit of a low, a low range of uh, trees. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to take that uh, blue. And I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow in with that. So I'll take a little bit of this. Uh, what I'm now, now I'm putting in the uh, the tree line or the trees back here behind these buildings. So this, this is the part of the landscape here uh, at the end of the field. Now it picks up a little, I'm going to put some yellows in here. This way, I don't want to have it all solid green, so I'm going to put some lower the more color in here as, as you as the painting progresses and as the paint is still wet you can add in more colors on top of that that's what i'm doing i think i'll uh, i think i'll turn the paper around a little bit so i can get a better angle uh move the paper a little bit so i can see what i'm doing I'm just painting, I'm just painting, and uh, these are trees, there's a tree line, a bush line behind this uh, little houses here in the background. And there'll be, there's some uh, 
some grass and bushes here in the front. I'm taking my time. This is a small area, so I just want to get you know get enough get enough definition back there to make it interesting looking. Mixture of uh, I got the lemon yellow, and mixing it with a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue. And I'm picking up a little more blue here and here and there, changing the color a little bit. This flat brush, I'm able to use the side of the brush, the end of the edge of the brush, using the edge of the brush and corners of the brush. This is not this is not the most important part of the painting. This is just a, a background, but I want to make a, a, enough definition back there to define that uh, what we're painting here. Put a little bit of put a little bit of darks in there, a little lights and darks to show bushes and grass and so forth growing here in the background, trees, low lying trees. Brush out the brush, and uh, let me see. I'm going to take another brush. This is the uh, using the um, silver brush, and I'm going to mix a little another green, make it a little darker. So I'm going to add in the, another yellow. This is a yellow. This is the yellow, yellow deep. Add it in with the blue, and that gives me a little darker. A little darker mix of green. Remember when I did that uh, mixing chart? Uh, it gave me a chance to see what kind of greens that I can capture out of these mixes. So by doing that mixing chart, it gives me the opportunity to go in and and get colors that are really you know they're varied. I'm varying the different colors. I don't want to use the same greens. I want to use a different color green, a variety. This is one of those large popular trees that grows in France. You see a lot of those when you look at some of the French pictures. You see these tall cypress. And there's another one, I'll put another one over here. This will give the pretty well signature of France. When you see these tall trees up in the, in the landscape, then you know you're in France. That's kind of a characteristic of the territory. So every French Painting you see will have these tall trees. Okay, now I'll put away the small brush. Now I'm going to use the uh, going to use the half inch. Now I'm going to go in and paint those buildings. So I'm going to use a I'm going to use a combination here. I'm going to use the first yellow. I'm going to use. Now I'm using yellow now. I get away from the greens now. Blues and greens. Now I'm going into the yellow. So this is the first yellow I'm going to use is the uh, lemon yellow. Now that's good. This is the, remember the sun's coming from this direction. So this will be the sunlit part of this building. So I'm putting the sunlit back, the sunlit color here, which is the lightest color I have. So here's the it's front of the building. There's another little building over here. I'm making that the sunlit side. So I'll give that the bright color of lemon yellow, which is the brightest color on my palette. In fact, it's the brightest color that Holbein has. These are Holbein artist watercolors, and these are all available on my website, everswatercolors.com. There are 108 colors that are available on my website. 
you go to my website to my supply page and there you can go in there and look at all the colors that are available and uh, I'll show you all the yellows that are available on the, after I finish this painting we'll go over I'll show you the, a chart of all the colors that are available and I think you'll see it interesting the variety of colors Uh, I'm moving. I'm moving the, the paint a little bit, so, so I, slightly, so I can get I'll get the angle with the brush. Didn't want to take it out of your view. So now I'm, pa I'm painting the uh, with the uh, yellow ochre now. Uh, I'm painting with yellow ochre now on the shadow side of that building. So now I've got the uh, yellow lemon on the front side, and I've got the yellow ochre on the on the shadow side to give it a shadow. And okay, let the let that dry a little bit. Now I think what I want to do, I want to get into the more interesting part of the painting. I'll go back. I got a couple little touch-ups I'll do on that. Uh, now let's get into the sunflowers. I think this is where my interest was. And uh, put these brushes aside. Now I've got the way I'm the way I'm going to paint this. Uh, I'm going to use three brushes. And uh, one the number one brush. Let's see what I'll do. Let me clean this up just a little bit here. Clean my cloud out with the tissue. I need, I need to clean off some of the areas here so I don't get the colors mixed up too bad. So the first color I'm going to mix or use is uh, the lemon yellow. And that's going to be in this large mop brush. I'm going to mix up a, 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 you know, a generous, generous quantity of uh, yellow lemon because I'm going to be painting. And uh, it'll be about uh, uh, a good quantity, but it'll be, it'll be the consistency of milk, just uh, you know, so it's thick enough and colorful enough to go onto the painting. Okay, now the other the other uh, paint I'm, the other one I'm going to use is I'm going to use uh, the one there. Let me see. I'm going to also use yellow deep on the same brush. I'll interchange the yellow deep with the uh, yellow lemon as I move along. Now the other color I also use a little bit is uh, quite a bit. The uh, I'm going to be using yellow ochre. And that's going to yellow ochre. I'm going to leave on the on the whole by number sixteen round. So that's my yellow ochre. This is my yellow mix. I'm going to use yellow uh, yellow lemon and uh, yellow deep, and possibly a little bit of. Uh, I'm also going to be using a little bit of quinacridone violet, uh, quinacridone gold over here. That's another yellow I want to use. Put a mixture. And then the, the third brush, I'm going to mix up that. I'm going to mix up a green. So I'm going to take that yellow, yellow lemon, and put a little bit of that ultramarine blue in there. And that's going to give me a nice. That's going to give me a green mix. too dark all right so I'm making a nice mixture here of really dark and light greens okay okay so I got my brushes loaded my brushes are loaded now with the paint so I'm going to start in with the yellow the yellow lemon 
And what I've done, I've drawn out the shapes of the uh, of the of the sunflowers. And uh, instead of painting each individual one, I'm gonna what I, what I do is I paint a section. When I paint flowers, I don't paint individual flowers. I paint sections of flowers. So I've got these. I've got these made and I've painted these into or drew them into groupings. Different sizes, and I'm varying the color. I'm picking up a little bit of different colors. I'm using a, a little of those three colors. I'm using lemon yellow. I'm picking up a little bit of uh, yellow deep. So I'm, I'm mixing the yellows around. I'm not using the same colors. I'm using a variety. And this yellow will also be, uh, you'll see as toward the end of the painting, when I, have, when I put the lavender field next to this yellow, because of the contrasting color, and it's a complementary color, it will make this yellow even brighter. So that's why I really wanted to paint the sunflower along with the lavender field. It just painted just painting yellows. I mean, a sunflower field. I mean, just all yellows. I mean, that's fine. Uh, I've done that. Be I've done that before, but it's a. Uh, it's just one color. So I'm picking up a variety of yellows. I'm using uh, the three bright yellows I have. The uh, lemon yellow, uh, the lemon the yellow deep, and the conocodum gold. Those are my brighter yellows. Uh, a little more to go down here. These sunflowers, some of them are, are, are in the direct sun, some of them are in shadow, but that's that's fine. They, that's why they have to have different colors. You know, they're not all the same color. Depends on how they're facing. It depends on the direction they're in, what position they are. They may be uh, blocked out by another flower next to it. So that's all taken care of by making the colors a little bit different. Some are darker, some are lighter, but they're all yellow. That's that's the whole clue here. So you'll, you'll start seeing the thing come together. As soon as I get a little more, I'm going to get these groupings done. Let me stop there for a minute. Now, I've got the... Uh, I've got the green and this one here. Now I'm going to go in here and I'll put in the green now. This is the green leaves of the of the flower. So I go in here with the greens and I separate some of these groupings now with, with a little bit of this green. So I just go in here with a green mix. And again, I'm using different mixes. I'm using a light color green, a dark color green. It's really uh, the yellow and blue mixed together. Lemon yellow and ultramarine blue to give me the green color but then I've I've got different values of green by mixing the different proportions of yellow and blue it gives me a different value so I can make a darker a darker green a lighter green by by modifying the mixtures and I plan those all out by just showing my mixture chart of how those colors would come together so I knew what colors I was going to use in the painting before I started. I wasn't just going to guess at which colors I'd use. I wanted to plan, get a better idea of what colors I could do with what mixtures. So now the green now is being added to this yellow. That, that gives a little, little different look with the flower uh, when you have the leaves around. And these are very... Uh, irregular there's no there's no real shape of the leaves they're just the colors that are located next to the, the flower itself i'm leaving lots of white paper showing because i'll show you a little bit of what i'm going to do at the end it'll change that so i go back go back to my yellow brush again and uh, continue on with the pattern here pick up a little more of a lemon yellow the sun's over here, so maybe these are a little, got a little more sun on them on this side over here. It might be a little bit lighter. 
make up your own story. It could be a could be a shadow from a tree on next to him, or something like that, or some other object. Here, I'm just going to make them all basically yellow, but different values of yellow, different different hues, different colors. Okay, so I pretty well got the shapes that I want in there right now. Okay, that's pretty well the shapes. I'm going to go back to the green to finish that off a little bit. And I'm going to put the green in here, a little bit of light green. Kind of dancing around, just using this big old mop brush. Just kind of dancing around, putting in different uh, brush strokes. They don't have to be perfect. They just have to show a little bit of liveliness, a little bit of uh, shape, a little bit of color. I can go back in now with a little bit of dark. No, I'm picking up a little bit more blue now. I'm going in now and putting a little darker areas. These are in shadow places. So I'm putting a little variety into the greens now. By putting a little a little stronger color, which is the blue, mixed with the yellow, I'm getting a much tighter, much darker value. It gives it a little more variety in with that green, not just one color or one value, but a variety of colors. Okay, all right. Now I've saved the last brush with the yellow ochre on. And I load up this number 16 round. And that's going to be the center. That's going to be a little darker. And I'll put that into the center of the sunflower. So that's the part, that's the part that you see is the sunflower shape is that dark center. And you, you see a little bit better out here with a lighter value. With a lighter yellow, you'll see that shape really come out. Now we're starting to get the sunflower shapes and the sunflower colors with that darker center. So now we're starting to build up the uh, the impression of a sunflower field with all the yellows and then we start putting in the, the darker brown centers and next to the green leaves. So now we start to see the total picture here, of what I saw from that photograph. And of course, this is what Van Gogh was painting when he was painting the scene in Provence. He, he probably did that plain air. He probably was right there next to the sunflowers as he painted. So he was painting what he saw and of course, as, a, as an artist, he put in his impression of what he saw. He, he put in the colors he wanted, he put in the strokes. And you know, he made his own interpretation of that scene. That's what I'm doing. I'm gonna be putting in a different color than what uh, he was using. I'm gonna be using a different color. Now you could go in with more brush strokes and you can add more more detail to the flower but i think to get the impression of of these flowers these sunflowers in the field uh, this is all we need to do just get the impression i could take a little bit of uh, a little bit of green and i could go in here and, and darken up some of these centers if they could some of them are darker than others not all dark Again, I can give a little more variety, just a, just a touch of green in there on top of that yellow to darken up some of these centers a little bit, not all of them, just here and there. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, let me dry that just a little bit. I've got all wet, so let me dry it. Turn on the, turn on the uh, dryer.
Okay, now I'm going to use the flat brush again. And let's see, I'll use the uh, three quarter. Uh, yeah, I think the flat brush, just airing it out. Oh, you pick the brush that will fit the job. And uh, I could use the hake brush for this area, but uh, but I think it's small for this big brush here. I think it's big enough. And, and with the water, just wet the paper just slightly. Just a little bit of moisture up here. So I'm using the, this is the one inch, this is the one inch flat from Holbein, the uh, synthetic brush. And I'm going to mix up a quantity of, you know, let me clean my palette just a little bit here. Use a sponge, pull out some of that color. Yeah, the uh, the brush sizes that I use are, and, and I use, I can use, you can use the, the amount of brushes that you need. Now, I'm going to mix up a, a color for the the uh, a color for the uh, purple, lavender. And I'm going to put a little bit of just a touch of red in that. A little bit of alizarin crimson. Now I don't want to make it. I don't want to make it red, but I want to give it a touch. Now you can see how that lavender uh, lavender color now is coming through. Get that ultramarine. Ultramarine it has a bias of red. If ultramarine is not not a pure red, it biases toward uh, the violet. So I've already got. I've already have a start with that. Just by adding just by adding ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue with just a touch of alizarin crimson. I turn it into that pure purple. And that's the purple I want. I want I'll match that purple uh, photograph that I saw. Now, what I want to do now is I want to uh, paint in here. I'm going to start, I'm going to start here at the round of flowers. Around the edge of the flowers. I'm, again, I'm going to come in and just, just do a real quick wash here. I'll start here. I'll start here with the flowers up near the flower edge. And again, I'll, what I'm doing here also is I'm. Uh, I can also define some of the edges a little bit better uh, to give a definition. I'm going to try to keep this. I'm going to try to keep this uh, section wet now as I go along. So the trick now is to, is to watch the moisture in the brush on the paper because I don't want this to get dry on me until I'm finished with it. So I've got to keep the keep the paint flowing. And I want to get a little as I go toward the uh, background. I want the value to be lighter. Otherwise, I'm going to go from dark to light as I move back. That's why I wet the paper a little bit to get started. So I want it to be dark here next to the to the uh, sunflowers or darker darker value here and as I move back toward the middle ground then I'll get lighter so it'll give me the it'll give me the, the impression of depth by going from dark to light it'll give me depth in the painting so I'll put a little more water in the brush as I go back, and as I go back, so uh, again, this is sometimes experimenting with different brushes or different brush strokes. Uh, I tried this. I tried this another way with another brush previously, and I'll show you the results of that after I'm finished with this. And let me take a look at under up, up close and I think what I'll do is uh, load the brush again and come in with just a little bit more, a little bit more lavender. As I paint this, I'm thinking lavender. As I paint it, I'm thinking lavender.
and then watching the edges here. Okay, let me give that a dry. I see one area already I want to make a little bit darker over here. Okay, now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some de a little detail. A little detail. So what I'm going to do here, uh, go in the, starting with the background, uh, I'm going to add a little bit of a lizard and crimson. And I'm going to add, the, let me come over here so I can see it. And a little bit of, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of color here to the rooftops. This gives a little interest back here, a little bit, but it, it also gives a little bit of, not only interest, but a little bit of color here in the background. Uh, lithium crimson is a beautiful color. It's very powerful, it's a strong color. Just a little highlights here to show the tops of these uh, buildings. A little bit, a little touch on this one down here, a little building here. And I'll take the uh, take the smaller uh, natural hair silver brush, a little bit of uh, blue, a little bit of dark blue, and uh, this is dry now, so now I go ahead and put detail in it. So I'm going to go ahead and put some doorways and windows. There's a doorway, a window over here. There. Now it gives a little interest to that background. And I might take a little bit of, uh, a little bit of color here and put a little shadow underneath, underneath the, uh, rooftop here just a little just to in, indicate a little shadow there that takes care of that takes care of that background I'm not gonna do any more up there and what I can do also is up here is I can add a little more and you see some marks up here so I'm just kind of making little bushes and so forth along the edge to give a little more a little more variety and it's just uh, you know my preference trying to clean up a little bit of some of the areas that uh, give them a little more a little more thought to them all right and uh what i want to do now is that in the field itself i'm going to take a blue color Or a darker lavender, but a blue color. And I'm going to paint in the rose. Now this 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 is something that uh, is just to add a little interest to this. I'm going to start out by I'm using the round brush. This will indicate that there's a row. 
a row of flowers, lavender. And I'll take a little bit off the back side, whereas it should be a little bit lighter going back. Now this is in perspective, this would change the angle. Every time you come forward now, the angle changes slightly. A little bit lighter in the background, not, not too much. This one over here, we'll get another one. Angle is a little bit darker, a little steeper. And we'll, we'll do another one over here. So this will give the impression of depth also. This will give it the impression of going back into the background. We'll do another one over here. So the rows get a little darker as you come forward. Uh, and do, let's do a couple more over here. So those lines are important. They're, they're directional lines, but they also give the impression uh, that you're going backwards, back into the back into the uh, background. It gives you a little more a little depth perception. Okay, now the last thing I want to do is I want to show you my technique for using the, the spray bottles. Now what I've got here, I got a mixture. I got the palette in the bottle, and this is the fine mister, the fine mist. And these are sold exclusively on Everest Watercolors, EverestWatercolors.com. And this is the this is the fine mist sprayer. Now it's it's uh, the other one I have is also one with dot spray. One with a white top is a dot spray, but this is the fine mister. Okay. Now what I'm going to do now, now that I've, I've pretty basically finished putting all the, the colors that I want on here, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add. There's a, there's a lot of white showing here. So what I'm going to do is take the mister. And I'm going to take a light spray and I'm going to spray over this area. You see that's hard to do with one hand. What I'm doing is holding up a shield here just so I, it doesn't uh, get onto the, I don't want it to get onto the lavender section. Try again. Okay, what I'm demonstrating there is that fine mist is a is a good tool to have with paint in it because here I'm filling in all the the white sections here and it gives it a, a an overall glow of yellow. Okay, that's exactly what I was doing here with this with this particular one. And I have a lot of all the, on my on my website everswatercolors.com. I have other videos of the spray bottles. Okay. And I could give, give me at least a quick dry here. This way. Let's put a mat. Let's put a mat over top of this painting. Let's we'll see. Let's put up here. You can see it. We'll put a mat around it. And uh, as I said before, this would be cropped off at the bottom. So I'm going to cover it with just a just a white, just a white canvas. Okay. Uh, but there's there's the final painting here of the uh, sunflowers and lavender fields. So uh, that concludes the painting. Now let me show. I did another one. 
I did another one before this as a practice. Again, just to go over the colors and so forth. Here's another, here's another viewpoint of the same painting. So they look very similar because I, I did them both the same way, but for practice, you can see here, uh, came out with the same results. The, uh, the, the yellow, uh, I painted the yellow flowers the same way with the, with the three different, four different kinds of yellows, added a, added a darker center, and then I put in the lavender field and I drew in the lines for the, the rose. Let's go back to my uh, main main. Light. Okay, let me turn off the light here, and I'll be right here to go over to my main uh, camera. Light. Yep. Yep. I got some help here. Let's go over here to my sign off page. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that was a uh, an interesting painting today. I I, I really uh, okay. Number one. To demonstrate the use of a yellow color, a yellow color is a very is probably a very hard color to use because uh, there's there's not much variety. You got a little bit of yellow, uh, maybe uh, maybe a little bit of orange in into it, a little bit of red, but uh, yellow is something that you need to really be careful with because it, it covers it up and then there's really there's so light uh, there's not much distinction there. But painting painting the uh, sunflower, of course, gave us some a meaning because everybody knows everybody has seen sunflowers and they know what they do so I, that was my first inspiration was using a sunflower as my as my model and then the the uh, I think in yellow the most important part is using the complementary colors around it when you put green with it uh, you put blue with it and particularly when you put the the violet or the purple around it the lavender color that yellow really comes alive and I want to show you one other thing here uh, Let's see, I want to, uh, my main camera. Let's see where, uh, let, me, let, me, let me take you back. Let's see over here, let me take you back. Uh, I gotta put this on. I wonder, I told you I'd show you the colors. These are all the colors that are available on my website. These are Holbein Artist watercolors. And there are 18 yellow colors. And you can see those. I used four of them today, but there are many more. Uh, so those are the colors that are available on my website, everestwatercolors.com. But there are 18 watercolors of artist quality. And you go onto my website, uh, everestwatercolors.com, go to my supply page. And then uh, from there, I have a, a, a whole list of the colors you go to. You go down there and take a look at it. And... Uh, so that answers that one. I gotta take this off. Okay, so that concludes my painting today and I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And if you have questions or comments, uh, please uh, provide them in uh, YouTube or Facebook and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'll be back again next week on Thursday. So I'll see you on Thursday. Two o'clock. At two o'clock.